Hello everyone, my name is Ryan and in this video I'm going to be covering six myths about Linux that are still here to this day and whether there's actually any truth to them. So a lot of the myths that we're going to be debunked in this video are still prevalent today and this is either due to a lack of understanding by the individual spreading them or alternatively just lack of experience. So in 2022, what myths about Linux do I still hear? Okay, so myth number one, you must use the terminal in Linux. So yes, Linux, like many operating systems, does include a command line based utility. In this case, it's the terminal. But do you need to use it day to day when using Linux? Now, honestly, this will depend entirely on the distribution you're using. So let me explain. So Linux is unique in the way that unlike Windows or Mac OS, there's several versions of Linux, or distributions if you like. So the closest comparison to Linux I would say was probably Android on smartphones. And what I mean by that is technically all manufacturers will be using Android, but they put their own spin on it and use this as some form of UI change or some additional software that's bundled with the phone. In comparison, a Linux distribution includes the look and feel or desktop environment that you interact with. It also includes the Linux kernel, a package manager, as well as an accompanying repository with some pre-installed applications. Of course, there are other things that make up a distribution, but to keep it simple for this video, they're the main things. So for example, if you've got a distribution such as Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Pop! OS, or even Manjaro, all of these distributions do include full GUI tools for near enough anything that you'd need to do with your system. So if you're using those distributions, in that case, I would say no, the terminal is not required to use Linux. Of course, on the flip side, you've got distributions such as Arch Linux, which is exclusively terminal based and does not include any GUI tools by default. So of course, in that case, yes, the terminal is required to use Linux. However, I'll probably say for most people that use Linux or even looking to try it out sometime in the future, I seriously doubt they'll be using Arch as their first choice. In fact, you'll probably find them, they'll gravitate towards sort of something like Ubuntu or Linux Mint. Now for advanced functionality, yes, you probably would use the terminal. In the same way that an advanced user would use command prompt or PowerShell in Windows to carry out tasks that would typically take longer if you went the GUI route. But I'd say for the vast majority of people who use Linux, distribution pending of course, this myth is not true. You do not need to use the terminal to use Linux. Okay, so myth number two. Linux is hard to install. So in 2022, all modern operating systems have a full GUI installer and that does include Linux. Now granted with Linux, unlike Windows, it is unlikely you will purchase a computer with Linux pre-installed unless you purchase one online. So I suppose in that case, you will need to install Linux from scratch, which I think is where the supposed difficulty comes from. In short, the whole process will involve you choose a distribution, downloading the disk image or ISO for that particular distribution, flashing it to some bootable media, which is usually a USB drive, and then from there you boot from the installation media, follow the setup wizard, reboot, and voila, you've installed Linux. Of course, on the flip side, if you install Windows from scratch, you do the exact same process. You download the Windows ISO, you flash it to a USB drive, boot from the drive, and then follow the installation wizard. Restart your system, and voila, you've installed Windows. That being said, of course, the same people that may have struggled to install Linux in the past were very likely to struggle to install Windows as well. So in reflection, I would say that Linux is probably about as difficult to install as any other operating system for the PC platform. So no, I would say that the myth that Linux is difficult to install is not true at all. Okay, myth number three. NVIDIA hardware does not work with Linux. Now, if I'm honest with you, before I installed Linux on my desktop, which happens to have NVIDIA hardware, this was the biggest thing that was keeping me away. But I'm pleased to say that NVIDIA does work with Linux, at least for my particular hardware, which at this point was a GTX 1080, and now it's an RTX 3060 Ti. If I use NVIDIA on Linux, I have full support for NVENC, CUDA, G-Sync, FreeSync, as well as accelerated 3D graphics support for gaming, as well as browsers, although the latter does need to be enabled manually. And all I had to do to get to the work was to install the proprietary driver from my distribution's repository. Now this process does differ slightly from Windows, as in Windows you download a installation package from NVIDIA's website. So I suspect this myth is more surrounded in the manner of the driver itself rather than objective fact. Yes, the driver you install is not open source, unlike the drivers available from manufacturers such as Intel or AMD. But the fact remains that open source or not, NVIDIA does provide a day one drive for all hardware launches. And that's the same on both Windows and Linux. Of course, NVIDIA isn't perfect, 
There has been some historic moments where NVIDIA support has been lacked on Linux. Uh, one example that always gets cited is switchable graphics, as the switchable graphics is only officially supported on Linux for laptops that have 10 series or newer. So is the myth true that NVIDIA hardware does not work on Linux? Historically, maybe, but at least in 2022, and assuming you're using modern hardware, and you've installed the drive from the distribution's repository, then I'd say no, the myth is not true. Okay, myth number four. Software availability on Linux. Or well, in other words, Linux does not have the same software availability as Windows. Now, on the surface, this myth is true. Windows does have more software available than Linux, but what people really mean when they say this is that it doesn't have commercial software such as Microsoft Office or the Adobe Suite. Again, this is true. But on the flip side, Linux does have, at least to my knowledge, every browser that's found on Windows, every known open source project such as Audacity, Putty, LibreOffice, Cadenlive, OBS Studio, VLC and GIMP, as well as proprietary software such as Discord, Steam, Zoom, TeamViewer, Dropbox, or even Spotify. In fact, if a piece of software is not subscription based, then chances are you'll be able to install and run it on Linux. But then again, if you are using subscription based products, then you're already tied into the Windows ecosystem anyway, so it's very likely you'd be looking at Linux in the first place. So does Linux have the same software availability as Windows? For the most part, yes. So, I'm gonna say this myth is not true. Okay, myth number five. The hardware support for Linux is worse than Windows. Again, like software support, yes, Windows technically does have more drivers written for it than Linux, but the vast majority of these drivers will need to be installed manually. On Linux, this is different. Chances are that if you plug a device into a system using a Linux distribution, then the hardware will be recognized and start working straight away. There are some exceptions to that rule, in particular Nvidia hardware and certain wireless cards, but for the most part, if you've got a recent Linux and kernel installed, you will have the latest drivers installed automatically. In fact, due to the nature of how the Linux kernel works, hardware that's not supporting the newer versions of Windows may still work with Linux. So just for balance here, I'm talking about the actual drivers here, not the third party software that typically comes as part of the driver installation. For example, on Windows, your printer may come with some software that allows it to print in a certain way or additional functionality that may not be present in the Linux counterpart. In other cases, even popular hardware such as VR headsets may not work with Linux due to a lack of a driver. So historically, hardware support under Linux was bad, but in 2022, at least in 99% of cases, I would be willing to bet that your hardware would work out the box. So I'm going to say that this myth is not true. Okay, so the final myth is you cannot game on Linux. So as of 2022, approximately 80% of games found on the Steam store that were originally developed for Windows are now playable to some extent on Linux. And this is something that's made possible by a technology called Proton. However, this technology is not perfect. As that does mean that although 80% are now playable, there's still approximately 20% that cannot be played on Linux. So in most cases, there's two culprits. The first is you're running a game that uses DirectX 12, or a game that includes a kernel level anti-cheat such as EAC or BattleEye. Unfortunately, this doesn't mean that it's very likely that if you do decide to switch to Linux, there are going to be some games that simply won't work for you. The gap widens when you take popular games that are not found on Steam, such as Fortnite, Volorant, or Warzone, which, if I'm honest, are very unlikely to ever work on Linux. Who knows, time will tell if the situation does improve with the launch of the Steam Deck, as well as increased confidence of developers to officially support Linux or at least make their games compatible with Proton or similar technologies. As of this video, yes, you can simply game on Linux, so I'd say the myth isn't true, but depending on your game preference, you might find that the result is not as rosy as you want it to be. Okay, so in this video, I've covered six myths that I've heard and still hear on a regular basis, in one form or another, about Linux. Do you agree with my conclusions, or am I talking rubbish? Let me know in the comments section below. Of course, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that like button, and subscribe to the channel for more content like this in the future. See you again soon guys. Bye now.